Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Weekend Wellness Hour show. I am very excited to have a new guest on today, Kimberly Lebbing, who is a success and mindset coach. She recently interviewed me for her Mind for Success podcast, and once I learned more about her, I really wanted to have her on the show. She is a NLP master coach and trainer, and I really wanted to tap into what NLP is, because you may hear this word neuro-linguistic programming out there. Really wanted to bring her on, and I'd love for her to share as well some of the other programs that she has, because she's helping people gain clarity, move forward in their jobs, careers, businesses. So thank you so much for joining us today, Kim. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited. So from the moment I talked to you when you were on my podcast, I'm very interested and intrigued by what you do as well. So, and I think, uh, I think we're a good match. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you have a very, very calming personality and I'm very drawn to that. So how did you get into this world? How, did, in terms of the mindset, coaching, working with um, business owners and training people. How did you get into that? Um, well, I started of course with myself. Um, I had, I had, I just grew up in a home that was, um, my dad was very verbally abusive Mm -hmm. and, um, because he was also an entrepreneur. So I want to say the good, the bad part and then the good part, because, because of that, it gave me an entrepreneurial spirit, but I couldn't, really, I always struggled. Like I'd get to a certain level and then like the thoughts would come in and I just couldn't seem to get past a certain point. And I, I fell into, um, as entrepreneurs, you know, we always want to get better. So I started reading books, doing seminars and, um, going to things, listening to podcasts and different things. And it really, really helped. And then, but it didn't quite fix it. And it wasn't until I ran into um, this neuro-linguistic programming that um, it changed me. Like neurologically, it was the only thing that I had done over Uh the years. And I've tried everything, um, or I feel like I have. And it was the only thing that I could, that I found that actually worked and Mm -hmm. stayed. Like I didn't have to keep trying. So it was really impactful for me. That's amazing. And so you went through a lot of training, almost 800 hours worth of training in this, right? I mean, you went full (laughs) into it. You didn't just go, let me dabble in it a little bit. You went full into it. I totally did. And it's funny because I literally just finished, completed a training this weekend. That was another three days. (laughs) Of course. So you pushed over that 800 hour mark. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I, anything, just history of many of me, anything I've ever done, if I was into whatever it was, I was into, I was all, I'm an all in person. So, um, I want to know everything about it. Um, And, and then I learn it and I learn it really well. So, and I feel like, I feel like that with, with this. Wow. And so when you, after you got all these certifications, did you start becoming a coach mindset and success and success coach in the meantime, or how did that evolve? So this is interesting. And this is why Mm -hmm. I love what you do so much because Mm -hmm. I started out as a health coach. Okay. So our, uh, and it was because I, I had a lot of autoimmune issues. Um, and my kids did too. We did a diet and I, Mm -hmm. we had a doctor that was like, Oh, this is great. You successfully did this diet. I want you to start teaching my other patients. So Mm -hmm. I literally kind of got thrown into the coaching thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but as I was doing it, I was noticing that the, the people that were, the most sick had a similar history as me. A lot of them did. Um, And so with, with the biggest autoimmune things, and I don't do that anymore, but that's what got me started on my journey with this is I made that connection of, huh, that's really interesting. So that, that how much it affected their health. And so Mm -hmm. I gradually started, I was doing the trainings while I was in health coaching and I gradually just started moving into, um, this mindset world. And then I decided to go all in, in 2018 and, and do just this. And that's when I developed my, my signature program, which is my four hour rapid results. 
Yeah. And I definitely want to talk about that a little bit later because I want to go into what that involves. And because your testimonials on your website are fabulous. If people having these transformations in four hours, usually things take a little bit longer, but I know when you throw in NLP, there's a lot of testimonies out there about how it can change people very quickly, which is one of the reasons why I think it'd be great to educate our listeners. What exactly is NLP Neuro Linguistic Programming? Sure. Um, well, if you break down just the word, um, mm-hmm. the neuro yeah. part. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I mean, we're we're dealing with the brain and how you how you've been programmed. We're programmed from the day we're born, either mm-hmm. negatively or positively. Um, most people, I would say, ninety nine percent of people just kind of float through whatever programming they were given or were around. And then they don't even know that they can change that. And so um, the neuro-linguistic programming is literally through changing it through our language, through our internal language, through the language that comes into us and just what we're consuming. And and it is fast. Um, This is one, one thing that I've, I've found that it is, it's like 10 Xing anything I've ever found as far as how quickly it works. So, yeah, it's amazing. And I've seen speakers who spoken about NLP before and how they've shifted the room very quickly. So that's part of the reason why I'm fascinated to talk to you about, especially since you're one of the master trainers. So for you, you kind of explained why you studied it. How important is it to the everyday person? Or is it for everyone in this world? Is it for people who are in business? What would you, what's your take on that? Um, well, I, so, so for me, I focus on business owners and entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the people yeah. I generally work with, mm-hmm. um, uh, professionals also, but mm-hmm. is it for everyone? Yes, uh, <laughs> seriously. And, and we're, I mean, we're all programmed to a degree we're programmed. And so if you're not getting the results that you want, you know, in anything in your health or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I, I know we talked about this with like, with what yeah. you do, mm-hmm. it shows up emotionally first. And then it show then it, then it comes out and shows up in the body. Yeah. So, so I, I would say, yeah, anybody, um, and, and you can focus on this just by shifting, paying mm-hmm. attention to your words, paying yeah. attention to your self-talk, mm-hmm. um, and those types of things you can do right away. Yeah. So for people who are very unfamiliar with this, can you give us some concrete examples? What do you mean by self-talk? What do you mean by shifting your focus? Like maybe some everyday examples that you see and how you work with people. Sure. Sure. I will give you some simple, just a simple uh, example. Um, I I'll ask the audience, try not to focus on an elephant. Mm -hmm. Um, and what do you bring to mind? Of course, an elephant. <laughs> right. So, so I, this is the most simple example. Most of us focus on what we don't want. Mm-hmm. And so it brings it into it. I mean, it brings it even more in front of us. We get mm-hmm. whatever we focus on. Mm-hmm. And um, when we use this in our words, we do it even to our kids. If we mm-hmm. talk, if you tell your like child to stop running, you're telling them subconsciously what you don't want. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you say it the way you want it instead, um, and we do this with ourselves. So, so instead of stop running, can you walk down the hall? Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> So saying things the way you want it and doing that in your brain as well, because as business owners or entrepreneurs, we tend to get in, we get stuck in what's not working. Mm -hmm. And instead of uh, focusing on what we really want Mm -hmm. instead, and that's a question that I ask clients is what do you want instead? Mm -hmm. So, and specifically, Mm -hmm. um, with my clients, I have a process to actually remove the internal filters. So sometimes these negative things are just a, it's a result of the programming that we received yeah. growing up. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even know it's there. I'm always finding new layers of filters. <laughs> I mean, literally. It's true. And I all I have friends, you know, in the past who've told me, 
how do you stop the negative thoughts? They just come. I can't get them to stop. And, you know, I try to coax them to think about other things, but that I know that is a real problem for most people in this world. Most people. It is. And the programming is set in usually before the age of seven. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is stuff that you've forgotten about, or maybe you haven't forgotten about, but you just like yeah. push to the side and we're like, oh, I can get past that. And it's that programming. That's the programming layer that, that can change the way you respond the way you uh, react to things the way the way you do things your activities and everything can change whenever you can reprogram that old filter mm -hmm. I like to refer to it as an old filter too because yeah. it helps your brain <laughs> think okay something mm -hmm. new is coming right right and I assume one of the steps to reprogram something is have an awareness of it yes would be I would imagine that would be huge and even when you're trying to reprogram something besides having an awareness it's how do you implement it when that new trigger comes up and you go back to that subconscious programming again so that's what I love about this this process yeah. is when that usually doesn't even come up mm -hmm. because literally when you go to the source and you find the source of it Mm -hmm. Um, and I have a way of, you know, questions that I ask to be able to okay. help people find what that is. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you take the subconscious mind and you can teach it. Like, what did you learn from this? Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it changes the neuro, the neurons in your brain so that when that thing comes up again, you respond totally differently. Oh, and it's amazing. without trying instead of, because usually what we do is we try, we do all the things first. Mm -hmm. We don't go to the source. We do the, you know, well, I'm going to do better. I'm going to mm -hmm. be more consistent and I'm going to talk my way into it. You know, we might do af even affirmations if not done in the right order can really be almost counterproductive because mm -hmm. if you don't believe it subconsciously, yes. Yes, it, exactly. it doesn't, it doesn't align with you, then it's totally counterproductive. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when you talk about going back to the source, for those whose source is a bit of a traumatic memory, do you still go back to the source, which can be a little bit upsetting possibly, or are you able to access it without it, them having to relive the experience? I am able to access it without them reliving it. Okay. And okay. Um, that's part of the beauty of the process. There's yeah. really, um, it's, it, we work on emotions, but there's yeah. really no emotion in it. That's, that's <laughs> fabulous. And it's amazing that you can talk about it being that way. But that's great. So when someone goes through this process of learning to choose their words and their thoughts differently, how long does the process take? Is this something that takes weeks, months? It depends. Mm -hmm. um, I've literally had people that did just my one four-hour session and were okay. off and running. Like they wow. were off and running. And they had done prior work on themselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like to tell people that we are, we are onions. If you've seen mm -hmm. Shrek, we're all onions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Layers and layers. <laughs> layers and layers. So, so a lot of times there are, I mean, that's totally me. There's, a, you know, there's something once we uncover one part, there's something mm -hmm. else that we didn't see before um, yeah. that's yeah. revealed to us that we can work on. And if you commit, I mean, everybody's different. Um, any three months, six months, a year. Um, and I would say, I mean, my journey has been because I'm in this work, I'm always looking mm -hmm. for layers, you know, yeah. anything that pops up or if something's not working the way I want it to, I'll be like, okay, I get curious, like, okay, what's that about? Yeah. So, okay. So I know you work for, um, usually you work with business coaches, entrepreneurs, and professionals, but let's say someone is listening, maybe they're retired or maybe <clears throat> they work in a job where they just want to improve themselves and help with their relationships. Is this something that they should study on their own or still find a coach? Maybe not necessarily you since you work more with professionals, but are there coaches out there that work with people maybe that are not just not trying to run a business or something like that? 
Uh, there totally are. I mean, honestly, you can Google um, NLP coaches and mm -hmm. you'll find all kinds of things. The thing you want to look for, though, is a lot of the programs that are out there are for certification. Okay. And they are um, longer programs. And it's not that I never work with somebody that's not a business okay. owner because I okay. have, I've had oh, referrals. Okay. It's so I have, okay. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not it makes sense right. um, for them, for them to do it. Um, yeah. I don't certify people. I just okay. help them get the results that they want. Got it. Got help it. them uncover the layers. Right. Cause not everyone wants to be certified to coach other people. Right. A lot of people just want to learn it so they can apply it. And can you give us an idea of what are some of the benefits to learning NLP in oh. various aspects of life? Oh, gosh, I, it, it, it applies to everything. I mean, literally, it applies to everything. I mean, with mm -hmm. health, because of what you do. I and mean, if you wake up in the morning and you say, and the first thing out of your head is, oh, I feel achy and, you know, whatever mm -hmm. all over. Um, and instead you, you come up with, um, you know, I feel great today or it's just making a positive statement instead. Um, and if it feels like a lie, because maybe you don't feel great today, maybe say, mm -hmm. um, well, I, I, I didn't sleep well, or I feel a little achy, but, but just add a, but, yeah. <laughs> but I'm taking actions today that are going to be good for my body and, and help me feel better. So, yeah. so th I mean, you can apply it to anything. Okay. I found it useful with communication with my kids, my husband. Um, there's a whole, there's a lot of communication, linguistics, the linguistic mm -hmm. part of NLP right. um, that is, um, it is tremendously helpful okay. in sales, in relationships, in just in everything, in helping us communicate on a yeah. deeper level with people. And that's great. So someone who's working with you can say, hey, Kim, I have this goal to improve my relationship with my spouse. And I'd like to use words to help me improve that. So you can target the NLP process towards that person's goal. Yes. Okay, yes. That's great. That's yeah. Great. Yeah, it is. And, and it's funny that you bring that up because I would say um, most. So a lot of people come to me because of the they want to reach a certain goal. Mm -hmm. Uh, 99.9% .9 of the time, the thing that's holding them back has something to do with something personal. Okay. And that's, so, so it ends up improving yeah. everything. That's great. So do you then deal with the, help them deal with the personal thing and then the rest of it kind of blossoms? Yes. Interesting. Now, do we know how it actually affects the mind? Is that, has that part been figure it out. So we know we're changing the words. Do we know exactly what's happening to the mind or is it kind of generally your neurochemistry is changing? Your neurochemistry is totally changing. It's mm -hmm. changing the pathways. And I know okay. that because I just see people, I mean, you can see it on their faces. Mm -hmm. One, like something's clicked. They look mm -hmm. lighter. They look, they look different. Yeah. Um, and, and then I end up with getting texts, texts like, oh my gosh, I'm responding to my wife differently. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, I did this and I wasn't able to do that before um, because we removed the the clutter, the mm -hmm. clutter that blocks and literally they missed opportunity. There were opportunities that were right in front of their face. I don't, I don't really do. It's not magic. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, they already had access, you know, it's already there. It's already in you. Um, mm -hmm. they already had all these opportunities in front of them. They just didn't see them because they had so much yeah. cluttering up their mind. Yeah. And it happens to all of us. Sometimes we need someone to be on the outside looking in to see kind of where our messes are to help us get clarity and sort everything out. And you're a great person for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank That's you. It's wonderful. So, okay. We talked about pretty much everyone can need it um, or use it. So when you're going through this process with someone, I, are you giving them homework and is it something where they have to check in with their words five times a day throughout the day. How do you, how do you approach that with someone? 
Um, I typically, the homework is based on what they feel like they need or what okay. they can do. So, so okay. it's guided by the client mm-hmm. on it based on their, their goals that, that we agreed to before, you know, we ever started. Yeah. Um, so it, it would be in alignment with that. Okay. Um, but it's usually in a stepping out sort of way. So it's not like you have to say this thing five times a day. Um, sometimes people need help with words or, um, I don't do affirmations. I do questions mm-hmm. instead. So, okay. so um, can you explain that? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of, um, you know, these, the, I am statements, mm-hmm. I am powerful mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever you want to say, mm-hmm. I would form it in the word, in the way of a question instead, Okay. because your subconscious mind is more likely to take it. Um, okay. and not reject it. So, um, how can I be even more powerful or what, what powerful actions can I take today? Some, something like that. Um, yeah. and then your brain, it, it activates that reticular activating system in your brain. And then it looks for those solutions. Yeah. Cause our body likes to take action. Our brain likes to take action. So instead of having it like a stagnant phrase, you're, you're giving it a task to accomplish and to look out for basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, is that something that's part of NLP training? I've heard of this before. It's not a common thing, the questions versus affirmations. Is that something with NLP or is that something that you just do on your own? It is. So, so I learned this through an NLP trainer. Okay. Um, it is not common. In fact, the okay. first training, cause I had gone through three different ones, the first mm-hmm. trainer that I trained under, he was all about affirmations. Okay. And what I observed there was mm-hmm. that some people, and I literally knew people that would read them and then throw them away because they were felt like they were so untrue. They couldn't okay. do them. They tear yeah. them up. They'd be, um, and so I thought there's got to be another way to do this yeah. so that people aren't rejecting them. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is work you can do right away. So if you're listening without even removing those blocks, it can Mm -hmm. be something that you can do right away. But after you remove the blocks, they're really, really powerful (laughs) Give you in action. Right, right. Absolutely. So can you talk to us about your four hour rapid results program? I'm curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the first part I, well, I developed this process back in 2018. And when I, my very first client was, um, not four hours, it was 16 hours straight. That's a long day. Oh <laughs> it's my. a very long day. It was exhausting wow. for her. Actually, yeah, and you. She, <laughs> and me. Yeah. It was very exhausting for me. Um, she actually fe- looked and felt energized at the end, Mm -hmm. which was really amazing, but, but doing it that way, it would take me days to kind of recover literally, because it was just so intense. Yeah. And then when the pandemic happened, that's when I was like, there's gotta be another way that I can do this. Cause I can't be on zoom with somebody for eight to 12. I did get it down to eight hours, but (laughs) you know, you can't, you can't be on zoom with someone that long, or at least that's what was my perception at the time. I've learned that people do now. (laughs) They do do that now. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so, so I, that's when I got even more training and, and found a way to make it more powerful in a shorter period of time so that we could do it on zoom. Mm -hmm. And, um, so the first part of that process is we identify what the problem is, the real problem uh, okay. a lot. Of, so, so a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm inconsistent or, or I have imposter syndrome mm-hmm. or I have this or that. And they, they name these things and they're just surface level, like things. They're not, yeah. they're not the core problem. Yeah. So we get to the core and, you know, maybe it's a trust issue. Maybe it's like, it's something much deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we identify where it started or what first caused it. Um, And I take them through a process of questions um, and uh, they're very specific. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then we reframe it. We take the whole thing and we just reframe it and take what we learned from that. So we can leave it back there so that you're not making decisions 
and not doing behaviors based on this old filter back here. Yeah. Because now everything's clear Mm -hmm. and you can just, you can make decisions coming from a different place. Yeah. And that's incredible. And it's very needed for many aspects of our lives. So when you're working with someone and going through this four hour process, do you have a little bit of insight into their problem beforehand, or are you just creating questions on the fly? I, so my questions are the same in uncovering. Okay. So, so okay. Um, I do, so we do a pre-session before we ever hop on okay. the four hour, yeah. which clarifies. And I've also got a way, cause your subconscious mind likes to resist. I've got a way of helping it okay. not resist yeah. um, the process that we're going to go through. Um, and uh, the questions that I have I have a form that they fill out that gets more information to me so that they, um, so we're real clear and it helps, it helps me, but it also helps them in connecting the dots and bringing it all together. That's amazing. And then at the end of the four hours, they, they kind of have clarity on where they're going forward. Is it something then that they do have to practice at least daily to make sure that they are still, kind of in that mindset or are they just completely have changed and they just go forward? It, if we got it, if we got mm-hmm. to the core, it's yeah. changed. Okay. Um. So, so there may be another layer to it. Okay. And that's where people will work with me longer with, mm-hmm. okay, I got rid of this frustration that I feel, but now mm-hmm. I have this, like I'm inconsistent or, you know, mm-hmm. there's something else going on. And then okay. we tackle that layer as well. But whatever that thing was, like, generally, unless there's some other little, sometimes occasionally there'll be like some little sneaky thing that pops up that I'm like, Oh, I didn't see that before. (laughs) And then Mm -hmm. we go in and we get that. We get that too. Yeah. I know our lives are so complicated. And often when we're retelling our story, you don't even think to bring up something or something you forgot. So yeah, it's hard to cover it all and, and say, this is me in one, you know, one fell swoop. It is. And and honestly, sometimes we just don't know how it plays out until after okay. the four hour. And we like give oh, them, okay. depending on um, whatever thing they were working on, like some people are in whatever problem that was that they came for me, some came to me for some people are in the problem, like, and they have an immediate opportunity to see how they respond differently. Other people, it's something that, okay, this is, it's a problem, but it's not something that happens daily. Okay. That makes sense. So it may take a little bit for it to show up, if that makes sense. Yeah, Yeah, that does. This is all fascinating. I mean, what a wonderful process that you've developed over the years. And then I also know that you're a master practitioner of integrated timeline. Can you explain that? What does that mean? So timeline is part of NLP. Um, It was actually, so it was actually developed after, so not by the original NLP guys, um, but uh, there was another person that came in and did it after um, a therapist. And uh, that, that is an actual big part of my process Mm -hmm. that I use. It is very, very powerful. Um, And it's a way of releasing old baggage. Okay. It, it really is. It's it's a way of releasing old baggage really easily, um, quickly. Um, there's different people that do different ways of there's different ways mm-hmm. of doing it. Um, I think that EMDR, which mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are familiar with, that's based mm-hmm. in timeline. Okay. Um, okay. it's like a little derivative of it. So, so I use it too. That's one of my many tools. It's not the okay. only one, but, okay. but it is one of my tools. <laughs> okay. So, so when people work with you, they're kind of getting thrown in a lot of different tools that you've had experience with to produce this great result, basically. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's wonderful. Well, this is great. Is there anything else that you're involved in that we didn't cover that you'd love to share with? Oh Bye. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Open-ended question. <laughs> it is a big question. I'm like, yeah. well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think, no, I think we hit, I think we hit okay. the, the big parts. Okay. That's amazing. And can you, how do people reach you? Um, you can go to my website, KimberlyLeving.com. I've got okay. resources on there. Um, there's things to download and I'm all over social media. I'm new on TikTok. 
So, so congratulations. <laughs> I haven't branched into there yet. So congratulations <laughs> for jumping in. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. And your last name is L-E-B-B-I-N-G, correct? Yes. Okay, yes. wonderful. So KimberlyLebing.com. Wonderful. Yes. Thank and you. so can people reach out to you if they want to work with you there? Uh, yes, they can reach out to me there, or if you find me on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, I'm on all of them okay. <laughs> now officially because yeah. TikTok too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. um, you can reach out to me and message me and we can have a conversation as okay. well. That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. I know you'll be of value to our listeners since we haven't had anyone talk about NLP. And I know it's it's really an important step for people changing the way they talk and think about themselves. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. And thank you all for watching today. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye.